So I still get a lot of comments from people asking how to grade DJI footage, particularly D-Log M. Now I have covered it before in a previous episode, but in this episode, I'm gonna show you a new technique that I'm using and I'm gonna do a full grade breakdown. I'm gonna show you some clips that I've shot with D-Log M. I'm gonna show you node by node exactly how I got the look. So to get some footage, I took my Pocket 3, which shoots D-Log M. I went down to the Amalfi Coast in Italy, met my friend there with her drone, and this is what we got. Welcome to Sorrento. Reporting from Sorrento. Welcome to Pazitan. So the music you're listening to in this montage is from audio. So all the shots in that montage that were shot with the Pocket 3 were shot using the Profile D-Log M. This is a really popular profile. That's why I chose it for this montage so I can show you exactly how to grade it. There's three profiles in here. You've got Normal, which doesn't even need grading. You've got D-Log M, which is a slightly flatter profile, but it, it gives you a little bit more headroom, but it does need a little grade, which is what I'm gonna show you. And you've got HLG, which is a full log profile that needs proper grading. So I've got a couple of shots here that I'm gonna show you. I've got this one of a Vespa, and I've got this one is a drone shot. Now let's go back to this one. This is the actual grade. I'm going to show you in this episode every single node exactly what I did to achieve that look. But first of all, let's address the color management side of it. So I'm going to go to here. I've built a little node tree here. There's nothing on here at all. If I just bypass here, you'll see that we've got absolutely nothing on here so far. These nodes are empty, ready to just start grading. I'm just going to show you my project settings. So we go to color management, DaVinci RGB, DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, as always, and my output color space matching my monitor, Rexo 9 Gamma 2.4. You can use 2.2, of course, if that's what you're working. And the first thing I'm going to do is switch on this one, color space transform. So all I've done is go to my effects, and I go to my library, and I've taken a color space transform and dragged it on. So what I need to do now is tell Resolve what the settings are, the input color space. So that is DGI, D gamut, and my input gamma is DGI, D log, so we're using D log M. Now the output color space is going to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and the output gamma is going to DaVinci Wide Intermediate. That means that when we're working in here, we're working in DaVinci Wide Gamut. This is a nice color space that I like to work in. Now, what we need to do, and for those of you who might know what's going on here, I am gonna explain it in a moment. Then what we need to do is set our output CST. So we're gonna go from DaVinci Wide Gamut, because we've sent everything up to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and we're gonna to output to Rick 709 Gamma 2.4, again, matching my monitor. So this is now color managed. It's looking pretty good. We have good saturation in there. We've got good contrast, but it's actually a bit strong. And I'm gonna show you why this is technically incorrect. If we go to our scopes here, you'll see at the top of the trace, we're actually clipping white, which means we're losing information. And the same's happening in the shadows as well. You can see it's clipping. So this is not good. Also, our saturation is incredibly strong here. and We've not even done any color grading yet. All we've done is color manage it. The reason for this is this is actually incorrect. So our front CST, our, our, our end CST is correct, but our first CST, and I've got whole episodes on color space transforms. I'll put a link to those in the description as well if you don't understand what's going on. And I'm gonna show you a simpler way in a second as well. So this is incorrect. The input gamma here is not DJI D-Log, it should be Rec. 709 because D-Log M is actually Rec. 709. So let's click down here and choose Rec. 709. And that is a much better starting point. You see that we've got a little bit of headroom now. We're not clipping. We've got a bit of room in our shadows. Our saturation is at normal levels, and this is ready to start grading. So we could actually deliver that now, but let's just go and make a few little tweaks. So my first node, I normally do a bit of exposure and balance. I'm just checking the exposure is good. It actually looks pretty good to me. Let's go to contrast. Let's just add a little bit of contrast in there. Just make it look a bit better and a little bit of saturation. It's pretty saturated already, to be honest, but 
Let's just put a little bit in. And there we go, we've got a really nice grade. That could go out, that looks fantastic. Now, that's all good and well, but technically this isn't color managed correctly. The reason being is that the CST that I'm using at the front here doesn't have the capability of inputting D log M. There's no such thing. You can't do that in a color managed workflow. So what I've done is chosen the next best thing, which is Rec. 709. If you want to technically go correctly from D log M to Rick 709, you need to use the camera manufacturer's LUT. This will mean you could just apply that LUT and you don't even have to do any grading. So if that's how you wanna work, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So if I go to my next version, I've set up here a basic notary. There's nothing on here at all. If I enable and disable that, you see nothing happens at all. This is the D log M file straight out of the camera as it was shot. But I wanna make this look like Rick 709 technically correctly using the maths from DJI. Now, the only way to do that is to go to their website. I'm gonna add another node, Alt S, and download their LUT. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you go to the DJI website, I'm gonna put a link to this in the description. It'll take you directly to this page. Find the product that you're using. So I'm on Osmo Pocket 3, at supports DLog M, and if I click here, I can download the LUT. So if we go to here, you've got all this product stuff in here as well, but here's the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 D-Log M to Rec. 709 LUT. It's gonna go Rec. 709 2.4. So there's my Mac version and a Windows version. I've already downloaded this, but let me show you quickly how to install it. I've done this on a few videos before, so just skip ahead a little bit if you want to. I'm gonna click here, go to color management, and down the bottom here, if I say, make sure you're on tetrahedral, by the way, in this interpolation, uh, it gives you better quality. If you open the LUT folder, then this is the folder you want to drop that downloaded file into. And I've already done that here. So I've got DJI Osmo Pocket 3 Rec. 709 to color grading LUT. And you get five LUTs. You've got the regular one, and then you've got spring, summer, winter, autumn. These are just looks that DJI have added on. I don't recommend you use them. I recommend you go with the straight one. Once you've done that, just press update lists, and you might have to restart DaVinci Resolve as well. And then if I just label this one LUT, if you right hand click on this node, go to LUT and you can then choose it, DJI Pocket Osmo and it's here. And then what happens is we've gone from DJI D-Log M to Rec. 709 with one LUT. So this is now a technically correct color managed clip. Now all we've got to do is do a bit of grading. So we could do a bit of exposure and balance if we need to. Let's just do it for fun. Actually, just before I show you something else with the LUT technique, I'm just gonna remove that because I wanna compare it to my version compared to the camera manufacturer's version. So I was pretty close. I'd say my exposure was just a little bit down. Let me get rid of that. And let's just reset that one. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's slightly different, but not far off. Nothing that I would be too worried about anyway. So why would I not work in this LUT workflow? Why would I not just stay here? The reason being is I like to work in the DaVinci wide gamut color space. A lot of the plugins, a lot of the third party stuff I'm using rely on a larger color space. They certainly rely on not being input a D-Log M feed. So things like the DRTs that I'm using now, these are, I've got a whole episode on these, so I'll just point to that instead of trying to explain it here. But it's a different way of tone mapping back from a large color space to Rec. 709. I'm using the Mononodes one at the moment. It's called Look Lab Print. I'm really enjoying that. Some people are using the JP2499. Uh, Cullen Kelly's just released his Genesis. This relies on a larger color space input. They don't have inputs for D-Log M. So that's one reason that I can't work in this LUT workflow. And just before I show you the second reason why, I just wanna spend a minute thanking this episode's sponsor, Audio. So I'm logged into my pro audio account and this has given me access to thousands of music tracks and sound effects. Now to find music easily, I've taken a link from a track on YouTube that I like. I've put it into Link Match AI and it's gonna go ahead and find the best fit matches for me. So once those matches appear, I can choose the individual stems that I want to use to remix the tracks to make it exactly how I want it. So this is Elements 2.0. This is a major upgrade to audio stem offering. So you're getting studio quality separation. This is trusted by the major studios and it's all powered by Audio Shake. So as well as the original stems that we got, like drums, bass, guitar, vocals, we now have an extra stem element, which is the strings. So you can download these all at once or you can download them individually and you can mix and match these. So you've got across the board noise reduction and game balancing to give you full creativity. So it's also reassuring to know that the tracks are covered for social media and most broadcasts. So once I've downloaded them, I know that I'm good to go on all my projects. 
So if you want to try out Elements 2.0 for yourself and all the other fantastic features that are in audio, click the link in the description and you'll get 70% off your first year. Enter the code DARREN at checkout. You'll also be supporting my channel. So let's go back to the main video. The second reason is you have to be careful when you're working under LUTs. They're not as forgiving as if you're working in that nice large color space that I'm used to or a color managed workflow using CSTs. So let me show you. If I go to look here, what I'm going to do is go to my Chroma Warper and select here. Let me just show you something that can happen if you're not careful. So let's say I want to increase the saturation on the Vespa here. I'm going to click here. That gives us a point. And all I've got to do is push out to increase saturation. Now look what's happening. The sky is breaking. If I just enable and disable that, the sky is breaking here. And also if I just zoom in and show you, look at the outline of this sign here. If I enable and disable that, we're getting this horrible artifacting. Now I've pushed that quite far. I don't even need to push it that far. Let's pull it back a little bit. So we've given that a break, but if I go to the sky, you'll see that the sky is still not good. So this is fixable, but it'd be really easy to miss that if you're not careful what you're doing. So let me switch that node back on. I'm just going to push the saturation out a little bit more and let's just zoom in so you can see what's going on. So let's have a look at that sign there. So the color model we're working in at the minute is HSP. If we change our color model, these are ways that human saturation works with luminance. If I go to HSL, it does indeed fix that problem, but it'd be really easy to miss that. So that's two reasons why I don't want to work in the LUT mode. So let's go back to my CST workflow. I'm going to show you my full graded one. I'm going to break this down for you now. Let's have a look what's actually going on here. But this node tree is freely available. There's a link in the bottom of my description. You can download this node tree. Obviously, it doesn't have the color grade on it, but it has all the labeling on there ready to go. I've got a video on how to use it, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And actually, first of all, let me just show you, if I go to the warper one here, you see there's nothing on here at the minute. I'm just going to show you that that warper trick that I just did doesn't get affected the same when you're not using the LUT workflow, but when you're in DaVinci Wide Gamut. So I'm going to do exactly the same. In fact, I'll do it a bit more extreme to show you. And you see there that my sky is staying safe. The signage is not breaking. And I've gone even further with my saturation than I did using the LUT method. So just to prove that that does work correctly in DaVinci Wide Gamut or any other CST workflow that you're working with. I think the easiest way to show you this is for me to take off all the grade elements and just leave the color space transform on. So that's taking us to Rec. 709. First thing we did, balance and exposure. Let's have a look at that. So I've just done a little bit of a move there. That's just using the HDR wheels. Uh, I might as well show you properly where I've done it. There's exposure there. Then we go to contrast. Now, when I'm applying contrast, I'm also wary, I'm not switched on yet, that my film look has not been applied yet. Now the film look is going to go at the end just before my last CST because I want to work in DaVinci wide gamut space. But my film look is coming from Dehancer. Now I need to put this on because this has an element of contrast and saturation inbuilt with it. You could use Film Look Creator, for example, if you don't have Dehancer, but I like working with Dehancer. So I'm going to show you my settings. So my source, DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, that's what's being fed into Dehancer. My print is Kodak 2383. I've just adjusted my target white point a little bit to make it a little bit warmer. And I've got a bit of halation and a bit of bloom on there as well. So that is my Dehancer settings. Now this stays constant throughout the entire montage. So all the clips have got that particular filmic look. And then I will adjust saturation, contrast, balance exposure accordingly. But that will stay set once it's on. So my saturation, is this is new. There's many ways of doing saturation in DaVinci Resolve, but I've got a new way of working. Now I'm going to show you what I do. So I'm going to put that on and I'm going to go up to here. So I'm using a DCTL called Mononodes. This is called Color Shift and it allows me to do global saturation here, but it allows me to control each of the six vectors individually. So I can control the amount of saturation in blue, the amount of saturation in red, the amount of density, and the amount of hue. So if you have a look at what I've done here, I've got a little bit of global saturation on. So I'm using this instead of like HDR saturation, for example. And then I'm individually controlling my blue density. So that's controlling the sky really and the Vespa. A little bit of hue change. This again was to make the sky match. I want the sky matching the next shot and the previous shots and all the shots. I want the sky being consistent. And I'm doing that with a little bit of a hue shift in here. And red density, this is what's happening on that Vespa. If you look at the red Vespa, 
this is giving me a nice dense feel on there and that little bit of flag there. So this is a fantastic product. I'm using this all the time. To get this, you need to go to mononodes.com, which is up here. And it's this one is the one I'm using, Color Shift. I've got a 10% discount code in my description. I think you put Darren at checkout, but I've been using mononodes for years. So if you don't have mononodes, you could use something like HSVSAT or the Color Slice tool. It's gonna to give you a similar look. What else have I done? I've got a little bit of temperature going on here. So we've got our color temperature change. So the only other thing I've got going on here is texture. And what this is, is called texture pop. So I've gone into advanced mode, Luma Chroma, and by tweaking these sliders, I'm adjusting frequencies. And what this is doing, it's easy to show you what it's doing, to be honest. I've got episodes on how I work with texture pop. But if I switch that on and off, if you look at the light here, okay, that is pretty subtle. Let me zoom in a bit more. There, you can see that I'm just giving it a little bit more refined. So these sliders here are controlling smoothing and sharpening in particular frequencies. So I really do like that. It just gives it a little bit of sharpness. So that's that shot. Let's have a quick look at the drone one. Now it's exactly the same no tree. I've got the same dehancer on the end here. So let me show you that. Same grading. I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these, but I've basically played around with my balance, contrast and saturation. But the only difference I've got here to show you is that the texture in here, I'm gonna show you what it's actually doing here. So I've set slightly different settings on the sliders, but what it's good for, if I switch this on and off, is if you look at the foliage here, it just gives it a little bit of sharpness. So it just gives it a little bit of texture pop, really. So let's put that on loop play. I'm just gonna play that through and it looks absolutely fantastic. The sky looks great on this. So I'm really pleased with that. Let's have a look at the Vespa shot. And you can see there, take a look at the sky. Let's go back to this one. And you can see that we've got really nice matching skies. That's a really key thing to do when you're balancing shots. So if you've picked up any tips out of this episode, think about subscribing. Most people don't. However, yesterday I did just pass 225,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate it. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you who subscribed. And I want to say thanks to Audio for making this episode happen. And thanks to Mari for her fantastic drone work. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. Welcome to Sorrento. Recording from Sorrento. Welcome to Pazitan. So the music you're listening to in this montage is from audio. Check this out.